Okay, we're going to go over an example of Boyle's Law. And so if you look at your formula sheet, Boyle's Law, it tells us that the pressure before times the volume before is equal to the pressure after times the volume after. So those two things are directly related. And so here we have a cylinder. Uh, we have a plunger in the cylinder. And we're going to uh, go ahead and do some labeling. And so right here I'm going to go ahead and write before compression. And so before compression, we're going to say that our uh, cylinder has a um, pressure, call that P1, so this is before, of 60 pounds per square inch. And we're going to say that it has a volume before it's compressed of 40 cubic inches. So what's going to happen is we are going to compress this, say we're putting as much force with maybe just our hand or whatever as we can, and after compression, what's the result of that? That's what we're figuring out. So after compression, after compression, we have a P2, that's what we're going to solve for in this case, and we have V2. So the volume after we compress it, let's say we push it down and then we read on the side of our cylinder what's the volume, say there's air in it, um, we're going to say that it is 10 cubic inches. All right, and so what we're going to be doing is solving for that P2. Now the first thing that we have to do is we have to solve for absolute pressure. So we have to convert this into absolute pressure. This is gauge pressure right now, so like we're reading a gauge. So absolute pressure. If we're trying to solve for it, it's going to be equal to that 60 pounds per square inch plus atmospheric pressure. So that's gauge pressure. Now we have to add atmospheric pressure to it. And atmospheric pressure is a constant number. It is 14.7 pounds per square inch. And so you can see on your formula sheet that absolute pressure is equal to the gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. And so that gauge isn't taking into account um, the pressure of being on Earth. And so our answer there, we get 74.7 pounds per square inch. So that is our absolute pressure. All right. We then can use our formula to uh, solve for the pressure of two. So if we push down, if we have a gauge pressure of 60 pounds per square inch at 40 cubic inches of volume, if we push down as hard as we can and we compress that volume to 10 cubic inches, what's the resulting pressure? All right, and so we can use Boyle's Law's formula to calculate that. So again, it's right here. So Boyle's Law is the pressure of one times the volume of one is equal to the pressure of two times the volume of two. All right, so the pressure of one, we have to use absolute pressure, so that's 74.7 pounds per square inch times the volume, which is 40 cubic inches. That is equal to the pressure of two, which is what we're solving for, times the volume of 2, which was 10 cubic inches. All right, so we solve for P2. So right over here, we just divide each side by uh, 10 cubic inches. So we get the pressure of 2 is equal to 74.7 pounds per inch squared times 40 inches cubed divided by 10 cubic inches. So we do our math and our pressure at 2 is equal to, let's do it, 74.7 times 40, 298 or 2,988 
Um, what we're left with here is we have inches left on, on the top because that cancels that, so we're left with inches. Um, and so we'll go ahead and uh, divide that by 10. 298.8 and we are left with pounds per square inch. So that's our answer. So over here I'll go ahead and put 298.8 pounds per square inch. And so that makes sense. If we're compressing this, there's going to be more pressure, so the pressure increased. All right, so I would say that that example is correct. There's your example of Boyle's Law.